This is Pastor M.D. Lewis on behalf of the Bible Interpreter Tapes. Uh, the lecture study on, the, on symbols is, the title is, Physical and Spiritual Structure of Symbols. I call your attention to the book of Luke, the ninth chapter, verse 60. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. Now here is a characteristic conversation of a Hebrew with a comprehension of the good and evil aspect of the law of physics and nature as well as the Ten Commandments and in addition to that the physical and the spiritual uh, relationship of law and especially in the symbols. Now in this statement uh, the Hebrew their whole conversation was based on this particular observation unless a person sees this the symbols will uh, lack a tremendous application to the revelation of truth. So here is a characteristic Jew, and there are many statements like this in the Bible, literally scores and scores of them. In fact, the entire Bible is fabricated on the principle revealed in this text. Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury the dead. That is to say, let those who are spiritually dead bury those people who are physically dead. Now, uh, you turn to a text, uh, as in Isaiah, the 40th chapter, and I want to call your attention now to the Bible reading so that when you hear this, uh, you will begin to determine and detect the meaning of these symbols and how it enlarges upon the meaning of the divine revelation of Scripture. This is Isaiah 40, verse 2. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem, and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she hath received of the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Now, it is not possible to suffer twice for the same sin. For instance, if a person hit their hand or their finger or their thumbnail with a hammer while pounding a nail and mashed it badly, it would be tremendously painful. Now, after it healed and the pain left, uh, he wouldn't suffer that pain all over again. There's no way of suffering physical pain twice under one given circumstance. But you see what he's saying here. She shall suffer, for, for she has suffered double for her sins. Now, that word double is the double application of death in the text that I read in Luke 9, 16, let the dead bury the dead. In other words, suffering comes to the individual not only in the spiritual realm of the Ten Commandments, which causes his mind great distress and suffering, but it also has a relationship in his physical body. Now, the relation of the physical aspect of one's person to the spiritual or intellectual a aspect is very, very close. Uh, as the scripture and the spirit of prophecy would say, that uh, he who transgresses the Ten Commandments will bring some ill to his physical body, either in ulcers or in colitis or some other particular feature. And the opposite is also true, that if a person violates the physical laws of his health, of his body, it will have a repercussion upon his mind and his dedication to spiritual things. So the separation of the spiritual or intellectual function of the person's life in relation to his physical is so very close they cannot be separated. Now, this could be enlarged upon, as I've already said, the God that created the natural world is the one who also created man and his intelligence. So the Bible reveals the fact that God is the author of the physical world, our physical body. He's also the author and originator of our intellectual personality. And the relationship of these two are so close that the Hebrew will constantly speak of them uh, in a very closely connected manner as to say, let the dead bury the dead. Now he may say, as he does in some instances, uh, let uh, they have ears and can't hear, they have eyes and can't see. Now, they had a 2020 vision, but they did not comprehend or see the things of the spiritual nature. So they're always talking about the physical eye and the spiritual eye. They're talking about the, uh, the physical body being dead and the spiritual body. 
and it goes on and on throughout the scriptures and this is one of the lessons that a person must uh, uh, look at and understand to understand the, the symbols of the Bible now there is a particular factor in, in the physical world that is very important that uh, that brings a close relationship and connection to the spiritual and that's the subject of this particular lesson on uh, the spiritual and physical structure of symbols I'm turning to the book of Hebrews the first chapter and reading verse 3 who being in the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power now generally people in the world uh, look at the function of law that it is self operative that is God sets in motion uh, the physical aspects uh, of the uh, of the law and then leaves it like a spring wound up in a clock to unwind uh, the spirit of prophecy says that that is not the case and this text indicates that it's not that God is constantly upholding the physical functions of physical law and if God would not uh, uh, suspend this or to assist in this contact the, the physical laws would cease to function. Uh, Sister White says, every time your heart beats, it is indic indicative that God is intervening in your life in a very personal way. Now, this is the observation that the Hebrew has, uh, and you would expect this, being the truth of, the, of God, that the physical and spiritual is so closely connected that God's hand is, is constantly in the operation of the physical law and his hand is constantly in the operation of the spiritual law. And these two are so closely related together that the Hebrew may speak in one word referring to them both. As he would say here, they have eyes and can't see. Or they may see, they may say, the person cannot see. When in reality he does have physical eyes, but he does not see in a spiritual sense. So a person has to watch or he will miss this point uh, in the scripture. Now you remember Christ said, is recorded in Deuteronomy the 8th chapter, man does not live by bread alone, that is the physical body, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So there are always two breads, two deaths, and that symbolism goes on and on and on through the scripture. And you must see the close relationship of how this is fabricated uh, in the scripture. So. He said that God is constantly upholding uh, his laws uh, by his intervening power and intervention in the lives of the individual. Now, let me call your attention uh, to the, the, the scripture in uh, this regard. The law of God, this is for, uh, in Selected Messages, volume uh, 1, page 236. The law of God, spoken of in grandeur, from Sinai is the utterance of condemnation to the sinner it is the providence it is the providence of God in the law it is the province of the law to condemn but there is in it no power to pardon or to redeem it is ordained to life those who walk in harmony with its precepts will receive the reward of obedience but it brings bondage and death to those who remain under its condemnation. So you may observe then that if the person in regards to the symbol does not apply the symbol in relationship to salvation to his life, that same symbol will be applicable to his destruction. Let me read this in uh, volume 5, 681. Let ministers and people remember that the gospel truth hardens when it does not save. <coughs> now, we referred to this hardening in, in the previous study, but this text says if, uh, uh, if the gospel truth hardens when it does not save, the rejection of light leaves men captives bound about by chains of darkness and unbelief. In other words, the plan of salvation which is ordained for your salvation and all the symbols that illustrate this. If they do not function in your heart in the sense of salvation, then that same symbol will be applicable for your destruction. So it is very important for us to see this close relationship in the structure of symbols in the spiritual and the physical 
sense. Now, notice uh, in the scripture, uh, the, uh, the book of Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verse 10. Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, and verse 10. This chapter in the scripture is very, very important. It has tremendous application to these symbols. And in verse 10, it says, For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing, the land mourneth. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Now, I want to point out in this text a, a very beautiful application of the spiritual and physical relation of the structure of symbols. Now, in this text, it says, for the land is full of adulterers. Now, that is a spiritual application in regards to the Ten Commandments, and particularly a violation of the Seventh Commandment, which has to do with adultery. It says the land, that is their, uh, their community of Palestine, is full of adulterers. For because of swearing, the land mourneth. Now, what he's saying here, because of the violation of the Ten Commandments, the physical land will have a, a recourse that is evil. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up. In other words, there was a beautiful countryside of vegetation, but because of the spiritual transgression, the physical land became defective and became a wilderness. Now, let me call your attention to the fact that the word dabar in Hebrew, which is the word for word in Hebrew, now, the word for word, dabar, is also the word for the Ten Commandments. And uh, uh, in the, the book of Exodus, the 34th chapter uh, is a very significant uh, verse uh, in this particular regard. Uh, it says in Exodus 34, verse 27, uh, verse 28, And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights. Uh, in the in the mouth this is Moses and he did neither eat bread nor drink water and he wrote upon the tables the words now this word for word in this text is the word dabar and it is also the word for the Ten Commandments as it will also state in the latter part of this verse so in this verse and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant the Ten Commandments the word for word and the word for commandments in this text are the same word in Hebrew, which is dabar, the word for word. Now, it happens to be that the word dabar, which is here interpreted commandments and words of the covenant, is also the word for wilderness in the Hebrew language. Now, here comes that paradox again, where a word meaning uh, ten commandments, which is good, which is the love of God, is also the word for wilderness. Now, this bears out the statement that I just read, that if the plan of salvation does not save the person, that same plan, plan of salvation shall be for their destruction. So now you see why a symbol of uh, the sword, as it speaks of in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, verse 12, to cut uh, sin out of the life, that sword has a double mouth. Now, the Bible never says a double edge. It always says double mouth. One side of the sword is the, is the mouth of truth to cut sin out of the life. And if the person does not permit the sword to do that, then the sword will be used for their destruction. So the crown of righteousness may be for his eternal glory. But if he does not, then the person will wear the crown of thorns as Christ did in his place, and it will destroy him. So you see there is a physical and spiritual as well as a uh, an application to righteousness and to, to uh, evil, to good and evil, physical and spiritual. And when a person sees this and is aware of this four aspects of symbols, uh, it makes the Bible a tremendous book. So in this text it says, For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourneth. Now here he says, Because of transgression of the third commandment, thou shalt not... Uh, swear and, and bear fault witness and so forth and the land mourns the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up and their course is evil and their force is not right 
So you see, a person may, may make this kind of an observation in the, uh, in the spiritual interpretation of symbols. If the person does not eat the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the word of God, he will lose the food in his garden. The beans and his potatoes and his corn will dry up. Now, this is how the Bible is fabricated, and this is the spiritual and physical relationship of symbols as indicated in this text and indicated in hundreds and hundreds of words uh, in the Old Testament. Many of them we'll take up uh, in the, the study of interpretation of symbols. But now I want you to see that uh, this text, let the dead bury the dead. If the individual turns away from the truth and righteousness of the law of God, he will be spiritually dead. And that spiritual death shall very, very quickly, uh, or in the course of time, uh, result in his physical death. Now, I want to call your attention to a verse in 1 Timothy 5, 6. It says, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she lives. Now, you see, this text could only be understood in its depth by a comprehension of the physical and spiritual application. The person living in pleasure is dead while they live. Now, do you see how a person misunderstanding these symbols may take a text as found in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, where it says the person shall be baptized for the dead and, uh, and apply that to people who are physically dead when it never meant that at all. This is 1 Corinthians 15, 29. Else what shall we say? What shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Now, baptism is only a symbol applicable to dead people, that is, spiritually dead. Now, if they are not baptized for their spiritual uh, death, so to speak, they will soon die a physical death, which will be eternal. So their physical death and their spiritual death have a very close relationship as their spiritual life and their physical resurrection uh, has in connection with the, the symbols of the Bible. So Christ said, let the dead bury the dead, uh, meaning that those who are dead in sin, uh, let them bury those who are dead in a spiritual sense. And uh, that makes, of course, uh, great sense uh, to them. Notice this particular statement, Desire of Ages, page 464. God is light. And in his words, I am the light of the world, Christ declared his oneness with God. Now you say, well, now does that mean physical light or does that mean spiritual light? Now remember the answer to such a question. Everywhere in the Bible, when the question may come up, is this physical or spiritual, remember that it is always both in the interpretation of Bible symbols. So if a person is spiritually dead in the violation of the law of love, you may say he is also physically dead in a certain sense. So it says that she who lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. So the, 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 pleasure, in the pleasure being sin in a spiritual sense will finally lead into physical death, and the relationship of them is so close in the Hebrew thinking and in the revelation of Bible symbols they speak of them as one. So when a person sees this type of uh, uh, interpretation, uh, then he begins to get the grasp and the depth of the meaning of symbols. Now let me go on with this statement from Desire of Ages, page 464. God is light. That means he's physical light. Now do you understand that the physical light of the sun is the source of all life in this world, physical or in a sense of intellectual? For if the sun goes out, all spiritual life shall perish on this earth. So when Christ said, I am the light of the world, referring to the sun, it also refers, as, it, as in the book uh, Malachi 4.2, he is the son of righteousness and spells it S-U-N. So as the sun in its light gives life to the world in the sense of physics and chemistry and biology, Christ as the light of truth also gives light in the spiritual sense. So when a person reads this in a double sense, as I referred you to that text in Isaiah where it says that they will suffer, suffer double for their transgressions, 
it means they will suffer in the physical and the spiritual sense. So whether it's in the sense of iniquity, it has a physical and spiritual application. And if it is in the sense of righteousness, it also has a physical and spiritual uh, meaning. So now, this, going on with this statement in Desire of Ages, page 464, I am the light of the world. Christ declared his oneness with God and his relation to the whole human family. It was he who at the beginning had caused the light to shine out of darkness in the physical sense of creation. And he is the light of the sun and the moon and the star. He was the spiritual light that in symbol and in type and prophecy had shown upon Israel. But not to the Jewish nation alone was the light given. As the sunbeams penetrate to the remotest corners of the earth, so does the light of the sun of righteousness shine upon every soul. Now here, to me, is one of the greatest evidences of the inspiration of the spirit of prophecy when Sister White has such a depth of comprehension of the interpretation of Bible symbols. Now let me read this again and point it out uh, and uh, enlarge upon the meaning. You remember she's quoting here that Christ said that he was the light of the world and specifically referred to calling light out of darkness in the sense of creation. He, and going on with the statement, he is the light of the sun and the moon and the stars. Now the light of the sun is the source of all physical food. But that physical food is only symbolical of the light of Christ as the light of truth that shall give spiritual life that shall live eternally. So he was the spiritual light that in symbol and in type and prophecy had shown upon Israel. Now watch how Sister White analyzes the physical feature of the sunlight and makes the spiritual application. Now this is what you must do if you're going to get the meaning out of Bible symbols. As I'm quoting now from this statement, 464 Desire of Ages, as the sunbeams penetrate through the remotest corners of the earth, so does the light of the sun of righteousness shine upon every soul. Now here you see she gave the physical interpretation that the sun lights the entire world. <coughs> so she says, the sun of righteousness, in a spiritual sense, is applicable to every person on this earth. So the fact that Christ is, has died for every person brings certain merit into life of the life of every person on this earth and gives them the opportunity to have the light of light that shines upon every person by virtue of birth. This uh, is spoken of in the book of the Gospel of John, the first chapter. It says, uh, verse 9, John 1, verse 9. That was speaking about uh, uh, Christ and John the Baptist. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, God has put a little bit of the light of spiritual truth into every soul. And the scripture has a beautiful way of saying this, O oh Lord, light my candle. Uh, and this candle uh, is spoken of as this light that comes into every person's life by virtue of the fact that Christ died for their sins and Christ is the sun shining in all the world and his righteousness shines into every person's life to a certain extent to give them a conscience of right and wrong to lead them to Christ their personal Savior. So in the book of Proverbs 20 verse 27, listen to this beautiful symbolism. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. That is, the, the God has put a little bit of sunshine into every person's life. This is what the text in John 1, uh, 9 said. This is the light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. So as the sun shines in every part of the world, pagans as well as Christian nations, uh, the sun of Christ's righteousness shines in every person's life. And if the person will permit that uh, righteousness or that little light to prosper in his life, uh, that light will grow into a magnificent uh, aspect in his personality. Now in the 18th chapter of Psalms, notice now uh, what he says. Psalms 18 verse 28, for thou will light my candle, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. 
Now you see that this prophet, by inspiration, ran through the physical aspect, came right back and iterated the spiritual significance of that text. Now when you pick up the book Desire of Ages and the other books by that author, you will see that she does the same thing. And one of the lessons in this course of study, I will bring that out and show you how she does exactly like these prophets do, indicating to me that she dipped her pen in the same ink as these prophets did in the interpretation of Bible symbols. Now let me read it again. For thou wilt light my candle. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. So as the candle would lighten the dark room, the righteousness of Christ that would come into the conscience of every individual to enlighten his mind of right and wrong, and if the person will follow that light, it will lead him to Christ, the light of the world, for eternal salvation. So now you see how these symbols have a tremendous application, and once a person sees how they are fabricated in the scripture, how they are very, very helpful uh, to the individual's life. Now let me turn to the book of Proverbs and in the fourth chapter uh, conclude this study showing you how the prophet will uh, connect the physical and spiritual structure of symbols. I'm reading the book of Proverbs, the fourth chapter, verse 19 and onward. Now listen as the prophet uh, iterates these words. The way of the wicked is as darkness they know not at what they stumble. Now, do you see what he said? They are in darkness physically, and they stumble spiritually. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now here you see he makes the connection of the spiritual and physical application of the symbol. He says they will become, uh, he who finds them, they will be life to them and health to their flesh. So if you bring the principles of righteousness into your mind, your physical body will profit. And if you physically go against the laws of health, your spiritual life will be hampered. Now you can see why the true church of God in the last days would have a spiritual enlightenment from the scripture and they would also have a physical message, message of health. For to, to develop the mind in a spiritual sense and not the physical body is only taking the, the gospel in half of its meaning. The true church has both the physical and the spiritual applications of, of the symbols.